This is the future. Before we start this video, I would just like to make things clear and inform you what you will be seeing in this video. First of all, the Warframes you will see here don't use any Helminth abilities or Subsume abilities from other Warframes. These Warframes can be insanely good in Steel Path levels without the need for the Helminth system. Secondly, this is basically a solo-oriented Steel Path guide which means that each Warframe is versatile in terms of damage and survivability. If not, they have their own trick to both survive and kill Steel Path enemies easily. So, without further ado, let's start with the very first Warframe, and probably the most obvious, Octavia Prime. You can't make a higher level tier list, or even a level cap video without mentioning Music Death Notes Prime. Octavia is savage when it comes to killing high level enemies and she exerts little to no effort in doing it. Well, that's not mentioning the countless times you teabag just to keep your invisibility. But despite that, Octavia still remains to be at the top when it comes to killing high level enemies easily. Her mallet is easily the most insane damage scaling ability in the game. The more the enemies hit your mallet, the higher the damage and because of this, you can easily sweep steel path missions using Octavia. Not to mention that she is also versatile in Steel Path missions. Not just in survival, but she can also do almost all Steel Path missions in the game since she also got one of the best crowd control in the form of her Resonator ability. It completely makes the enemies dumbfounded as they won't attack Octavia, her allies, and even a defense target. All of the enemies will follow her Resonator until the ability ends. Well, if it ends since you can spam it whenever it expires with the exemption if you have put the augment on Octavia. Overall, Octavia is a one woman wrecking crew in Steel Path missions but the truth is, she is only showing 1% of her power in Steel Path missions. You will see her brokenness against level cap enemies. Next is the passive monk turn into destroyer, Baruch. Baruch wouldn't be on this list if he did not receive his reactive storm augment which gives him an insane status chance and alter the element that an enemy is weak against. Each wave of his serene storm can deal decent damage to higher level enemies and the best part is, this warframe is solo oriented since he can tank better even with just low health values. Restraint is a resource unique to Baruch that provides up to 50% damage resistance when the meter is completely depleted. He also got his desolate hands which gives 10% damage reduction per blades and you can easily keep them since you can just recast his third ability once it gets depleted and the best part is, it scales and pairs very well with a power strength Baruch which is the way to go when building this warframe for high level solo plays. But wait, there's more. He also got a damage reduction of 40% when your fourth ability is active, and on top of all that damage reduction. He also got crowd control in the form of the lol ability. Baruch is a very good pick for solo steel path missions as when he got all his damage reduction active, you will receive minimal damage, and mind you, before your health gets depleted, the enemies will have to deplete your shield first then try to get past the shield gating mechanic, and thanks to his reactive storm augment, he can kill high level enemies just with his fourth ability. Moving on, we got Hildrin. The Mother of Thickness has got it all. He got armor stripping, damage over time with pillage and haven, and then tons of survivability with her shields and the shield gating mechanic. By the way, damage over time with pillage can be done with her blazing pillage augment. When this augment is equipped on Hildren, she can apply heat damage to enemies and then haven does also radiation damage, giving more DPS to your thick mama Hildren. The good thing about Hildren is that each cast of her pillage gives out shields to Hildren and strip both armor and shield of enemies, allowing her to soften them up and kill them easily. There's nothing much to say about this Warframe other than she is one of your safest choices when it comes to solo steel path. Speaking of safe, there's nothing safer than enemies unable to see you. I'm talking about invisibility and many Warframes can do this in the game. Octavia can do this, and there is Ash, Loki, and even Wisp can do this. But for this video, we will talk about Ivara. But squad leader? Why even include Ivara on this video when other stealth frames can do better? Remember that we are talking about the effectiveness of a Warframe in a Steel Path mission without the need for other abilities from the Helminth system. First of all, Ivara is great in survival missions since she can draw loot from enemies. Secondly, she got her sleep arrow that can paralyze a crowd by putting them to sleep. Also, 
She got her noise arrow which draws the attention of enemies and keeping them away from objectives. She got invisibility which pairs very well with arcane energize and her looting passive but always remember to kill energy Eximus units as this is her biggest weakness. And lastly, she got her navigator that does good damage and can one shot tackle lights in steel path missions with the right build and setup. Remember that we are talking about warframes that can make steel path easy without needing any helm infabilities and, Ivara can do that easily. Just use a glaive like a glaive prime and you have tons of fun using this to one shot tackalites while doing other stuff in steel path missions. I must also include Ash in this video because of her seeking shuriken augment that can strip the armor of the acolytes. He also got some nasty combos like the Quasis heavy attack that pairs really well with his passive ability and allows you to one shot heavy attack acolytes. Although Ash has the shortest stealth duration but still, he can survive with the help of rolling guard in your build. A simple roll will give you time to recast your invisibility again and be safe from almost all enemies in the game. There are also parts in the game wherein Seeking Shuriken is very broken, like the Vehek fight which allows you to strip all his armor with your Seeking Shuriken. Hell, it can even strip the armor of the Wolf of Saturn 6 Wolf. Ash will stay forever as one of my favorite high level warframes and he is a must try for steel path missions. But mind you, we are just talking about the base abilities of Ash here and we are not yet considering the Helm infabilities and other combos. Another obvious choice is Nidus Prime. The Prince of Infestation can't be left out when we talk about dealing against high level enemies. Although most of the missions that Nidus shines are on endurance runs like survival missions, but still, he is one great asset in Steel Path missions. The main thing about Nidus is his insane survivability. He is the epitome of immortality right now given that you have enough mutation stacks every time, which is easier done with the right build. Just slap a high range, high power strength build with Nidus and you are good to go against high level enemies in Steel Path missions. Another good thing about Nidus is he got some very useful augments or often called as band-aid mods. He got the insatiable augment which gives him more stacks faster. He also got the lava augment which allows you to recast lava whenever you want plus inflict viral status on those group enemies. Also, there's the abundant mutation which gives more mutation stacks and increases the damage of your virulence. And the best augment, in my opinion. The teeming virulence augment which increases the critical chance of your primary weapon. Several high-end, high critical chance weapons can push their critical damage to red crit because of this augment. Nidus is a complete warframe, especially if you want to run endless survival steel path run. We also got in arrows which is close to being immortal. Well, to be honest, you can't rely that much on his health values in steel path missions without the help of some helminth abilities or mods like healing return. Without enough damage reduction, that large health pool won't do any good. The best survivability in the game is stealth and invulnerability. However, there are missions in Steel Path that you are better off with a large health pool in arrows. Just take for example the Zeloid Prelate fight, or the Ropalol East boss fight. I know that you can rely on other warframes like Revenant and his Mesmer skin but my first choice would be in arrows since 10k health values plus things like Arcane Grace some damage reduction through armor, or Magus Elevate and Magus Repair are enough to stay alive in these types of boss fight. I wouldn't include Inaros as Steel Path Warframes if he wasn't that good at surviving against these enemies. But like I always said, it all boils down to personal preference. Another Warframe that is great in some boss fights in Steel Path mission is Titania. She is best in the Lephantis boss fight, but compared to Inaros, Titania has more use in Steel Path missions. She can be very good in capture missions, sabotage and rescue because of her speed while flying around in her razor wing mode. She is also good in defense because of her lantern ability and also, she is very good in missions wherein you require to kill enemies at the fastest time possible. Overall, Titania, is one of those warframes that you can rely on in almost all steel path missions except for those parts that require some big health values or survivability like the Ropalol East fight. It can be done, but not as easy as in arrows since you need to exert more effort compared to Sandboy. Another great boss killer for Steel Path mission is Groma. Well, it's pretty obvious but let's try to discuss this Warframe briefly for those new players. So there are two parts that you need to know about Chroma. His insane armor values with the Ice Element in Elemental Ward paired with the Scorn buff from Vex armor, 
and his massive weapon damage boost from his fury buff coming from the Vex armor, he can easily melt steel path enemies with his fury buff and also those bosses in the steel path mission. Just mod your gun or melee with the right element and you will be killing those bosses in minutes. Next, we have Valkyr. Okay, you may find it weird why am I showing a video on this kitty cat struggling to kill a lad V and his Zanuka pet. Well actually, I'm not showing her insane DPS which is obviously on her exalted claws. I'm showing here that even without the invincibility from Hysteria, this cat can still manage to survive high level enemies with the help of his armor. The prime variant of this Warframe has the highest armor value in the game. The base armor value can be raised with Umbral mods and Arcane Guardian to give you more than 90% damage reduction. And the good thing is, you can use this armor to regenerate energy for your Hysteria. The thing is, you can switch from melee to guns easily right now and you can do this while you are in hysterical mode. Once you switch to your gun, you can take advantage of Rage or Hunter Adrenaline to regenerate energy, then switch back to Hysteria by simply pressing the melee key again. This will be an endless loop of switching from Hysteria to Normal mode. Your Hysteria will give you invincibility and in the process, you have Life Steal which you can use to get full health before switching back to Normal mode and gather some energy. And, the footage I am showing is just a testament that Valkyr can survive hectic scenarios wherein enemies are hounding you or even with nullifying abilities. The amount of armor will give you time to go back to Hysteria and pound enemies with your claws. The next one is probably one of my favorite Warframes in terms of Steel Path, and that is the Pilfering Strangle Dome Pharmacora. In this footage, I'm using Protea's dispensary but this is not needed and you can farm Steel Path with the normal Cora. I included Cora in this video because once you've done all the missions in Steel Path, there's only one thing to do and make the game mode as your primary source of farming materials fast with Cora. Her pilfering strangle dome makes the farming super easy at Steel Path because it does not only provide more loot to you, but crowd control enemies to the point that they can't do anything. The only downside is, if you are planning to do a whip claw build, then you would need a good stat stick to get more damage from it. Whip Claw can't red crit right now like the usual thing we can see in the past, before Digital Extremes nerf the Blood Rush mod. But don't worry, as without a good stat stick, the damage is enough to kill Steel Path enemies with a normal melee modding. Anyway, most of the resource farming areas in Steel Path are dark sectors and you will be dealing with infested only which can be killed with a few crack of your whip. Also, don't forget the fact that you can use something like the glaive to kill those enemies hanging from your strangled dome. Remember that the only requirement of the augment is that you need to kill enemies that are hanging in the ability. So, it's still doable without the whip claw and just by using your ordinary weapons that can kill multiple target at once. The last warframe on this list, but probably not the least, is our resident burb frame, Zephyr. The rework has given justice to this mastery rank fodder Warframe, in the past, Zephyr was considered to be a meme by some and only a few enjoy playing her with her turbulence ability. The Warframe is super one-sided and only a few people want to play even if there are other combos that the community was showing. In the past, many believed that Zephyr is only good with the jet stream build, but little did they know that Tornado was super broken in the past especially with a gas build. The only problem is, it needs a lot of stuff to make it work in a real mission that is why sometimes, people still prefer to discard this Warframe. But things have changed now, Zephyr is an insane Warframe that can one-shot acolytes and even high-level steel path enemies with the help of her tornadoes while using weapons like the Fulmin, Trummer, and many other guns out there that you can test yourself. Well, if you don't want then I got a video for that soon. Zephyr's Tornado is not only exclusive for gas build now, but gas still is great by the way. It can melt enemies that are inside the tornadoes and it's super easy to set up her fourth ability right now. All you need to do is just press and hold her fourth ability and the tornadoes will do the sucking. If you want it faster, then just use her second ability to group enemies faster. After that, just hit the tornadoes and they will die in one shot. Aside from damage, Zephyr also has good survivability right now, her first ability allows you to glide for as long as you have energy and this pairs well with her turbulence since the only enemies that can hit you while turbulence is active are melee enemies but, while you are up in the air, nothing can stop this burb frame. Her abilities right now are well built for high level plays, especially in steel path missions. So that's all of my steel path warframes, 
Now, I would like to know what are your favorite Warframes to use in Steel Path missions. Let's discuss this in the comment section below but before you do that, if some of you are asking, where's the Wraith Warframe squad leader? How can you show footage of him and don't include him in the list? Shevagod is great in Steel Path with his shadows and gloom ability, but my only problem why I didn't include him on this list is he is locked in the Railjack system. Most of the Warframes I have included here can be farm in normal star chart and open world areas, and some of them have prime variants which sell for cheap prices. You can give Shevagod a shot, but it wouldn't be for all since I know some of you haven't got into the Railjack system yet, or are still thinking if you want to invest time in this game mode. But there are other usages for Shevagod, and that is his gloom ability which we will tackle in a separate video. For now, let me know in the comment section what are your favorite frames to take in Steel Path missions. Thank you so much for watching. Squad Leader signing off. This is the future.